Once again, I am asking you to stop abusing animals in TikTok trends. It's not good, and that's the topic of today's first story. G'day there, guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash Am I the Asshole, where we discuss if putting butter on bearded dragons is a morally questionable thing or not, because I think the answer is pretty clear. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the content. Thank you. Am I the asshole for not allowing my sister near my bearded dragon after doing a TikTok trend with my pet? I have a bearded dragon named Phil who I've had for about one year now. Phil is deeply loved by me and my family. My sister, 15 female, who I will call Jane, really likes to make TikToks of Phil, which I have completely no problem with since they're normally just videos of Phil running around or doing something silly like opening his mouth when he basks. Yesterday, my sister came up to me to show me a TikTok she had made of Phil. There is a trend on TikTok of putting butter on dogs, as some audio plays over it, of this guy saying butter dog. Well, Jane showed me a video of her putting some soft butter on Phil so that she could follow the trend. When I saw that, I became very upset. I had seen a video recently of someone explaining how doing this trend with bearded dragons can be dangerous, because the butter will stick to their skin. And if they get put back under their basking light, the butter will heat up and basically burn the bearded dragon's skin. I told Jane to delete the video, and that she can't do stuff like that with Phil, and quickly got him out from under his basking light that she had put him back under after the video, and started to bathe him in the tub to try and get off any of the butter that she didn't wipe off. My sister came and told me I was overreacting, and that it's just a fun trend. I snapped at her and told her I'm not letting her near Phil until she apologizes to me and promises not to do trends like these with Phil again, and ask me every time she wants to make a video with Phil. My sister got angry and told me she wasn't apologizing for just wanting to have fun with Phil and that I can't take Phil away from her. After I finished making sure all the butter was off him, I put him back in his tank that's in my room and I told her that she's not allowed to come in and take Phil. My parents found out this morning and told me that I was out of line for what I did and that it was just an innocent video. They told me I need to stop freaking out so much over things that involve Phil. My sister said she's not apologizing because she didn't know that it would hurt Phil, so I should get over it and let her see Phil again. I feel like I can't trust her with Phil though. If she hadn't shown me the video, Phil would have sat in his tank getting burned under his basking light and I wouldn't even know until it was too late. I think I might be the asshole because I could be overreacting like my family say that I am, and for yelling at her when she didn't know that doing the trend would hurt Phil. So Reddit, am I the asshole? Yeah, personally, I do think her doing that to Phil would hurt him, as you said, and I think it's a danger that she continues to be with him while she's not apologized or proven that she can be trusted with Phil and not hurt him doing stupid TikTok challenges like this. And that's all they are. They are stupid TikTok challenges. There really isn't a reason to do them. It's great when you can do safe challenges that are fun, but this is obviously dangerous. So yeah. Not the asshole for this one. It's your pet, you get to say what happens and who gets to look after it. Now in the comments, Kmart Dino 3 says, Not the asshole. Going viral on social media is not worth potentially harming a pet. Exactly. Animals that we're entrusted with as pets do not exist as entertainment props to be exploited. Not the asshole, respect the pets. Not the asshole. I agree with the above and want to say that just because she didn't know that it would hurt him doesn't mean she didn't owe you an apology. If someone spills milk but didn't mean to, it doesn't mean they get to let the milk sit there and not clean it up just because they didn't spill it on purpose or didn't know the milk was going to spill. My parents had a poinsettia in their house, which I noticed when I brought my cat over. She's kind of a therapy cat for my mom. I pointed out that poinsettias are extremely poisonous to cats. No one had any ill intent or anything, but my parents apologized for not knowing that and just about ran to throw out the poinsettia. I had to convince them it was okay to keep as long as it and all its leaves were out of the cat's reach. That is how you respond when someone says, hey, maybe you didn't mean to, but you're endangering my pet. Actually, you can be a lot more mellow than my parents to your response and still be correct. But the point is, if someone says you're unintentionally causing harm, you damn well stop doing it and apologize, even if you didn't mean to. 
Not the asshole. Keep your sister and parents away from Phil. Agara Brandt says, Not the asshole. I don't know much about lizards, but it sounds like you have a genuine concern here, and you're entirely justified in wanting to ensure the health and safety of your animal. If your sister cared so much about Phil, she would have been sorry about doing something that potentially causes him harm and worried that he might not be okay. The safety of your animal is a lot more important than the feelings of your sister, especially over something as petty as a TikTok. Animals are not a trend to get likes and views for, and if your sister doesn't understand that, then she doesn't deserve the privilege of seeing Phil, no matter how upset she might be. And now on to the update. Hello. So, sorry that I haven't been on in a while. Things have been very busy for me, but I'm here with an update. So after my last post and getting all your feedback, I had ordered a lock for Phil's tank and put it on once I got it so that my sister couldn't just get him. I waited a bit to see if my sister would apologize, but she didn't. So I sat down both my parents and sister to go over again why I wasn't allowing her to see Phil and how what she did was not okay. I had made a slideshow and everything about how putting butter on bearded dragons was in fact not a harmless trend. I told her that I wasn't mad at her for doing it since she didn't know, but I was upset over how she reacted. It took a lot of explaining, and I even used some advice you guys gave me on how to best explain it, and after a lot of talking and a bit of arguing, it seemed they finally got it. My sister got upset and apologized to me for how she reacted, and seemed genuinely upset after she realized what she did to Phil. My parents also apologized for not taking my side and scolding me for what rules I set in place. The lock is still staying on the tank just in case, but my sister is now allowed to see him and play with him if she asks me, and she's not allowed to make any more videos of Phil without me being there to watch. She seems a bit irritated about the rules, but she follows the rules. I also got her to take the video off of TikTok, and she ended up making a video on how what she did was stupid, and that to not to do what she did, which I'm very pleased with. She has gone back to making her harmless videos of Phil, just playing and running and all is going well now. I also want to thank Reddit again for the advice and reassurance that what I was doing wasn't wrong, since I honestly was pretty lost at the time. Now in the comments, Turkey Bacon is Heresy says, I know people are saying how it's a pain in the ass that you had to make a slideshow to get your fam to listen, and they aren't wrong. But I think it's amazing that you got your 15-year-old sister to not only apologize, but publicly post on her account saying that she was wrong and spreading awareness that that trend can be harmful to bearded dragons. I know she was being a pain, but I think it's worth acknowledging what a tremendous amount of self-awareness it takes for a teenager to not only apologize for being wrong and mean it, but to publicly post that they were wrong. I know grown-ass adults that are literally incapable of that. Honestly, good on your sister, and good on you, for being willing to take the time to really explain the harm she inadvertently could have caused. Absolutely this. Very few people will ever admit they were wrong and apologize. It sucks that it took so long for them to come around, but the fact that they actually did come around is pretty remarkable. I really don't understand why people struggle to apologize for things. It's such an easy way to resolve a conflict. Look, it's really hard to admit that you're wrong sometimes. People tend to get very defensive when they're challenged, and apologizing sometimes feels like admitting defeat, no matter how untrue that is. Wallowfancy says, That's frustrating that you had to put in so much work just to make people understand that their actions could hurt a living thing. I'm glad it all worked out for you though. You sound like a wonderful pet owner. Right? She had to make a freaking slideshow. Those family members didn't want to understand. I think they did understand and just wanted to hold their ground, but had no choice once the OP wouldn't relent. I too would keep a lock in Phil's tank. Maybe the final slide could be instructions to slather themselves with butter and sit under a heat lamp. Our next post is by user Sparky's Human, titled, Am I the asshole for refusing to let my girlfriend get a dog because it'll upset my old man of a cat? I, 30 female, have been with my girlfriend, 31 female, for three years now, 
and we recently moved into a nice house in the country. Gonna eat a lot of peaches. Now, as we're finally living somewhere with a decent-sized garden, my girlfriend wants to get a dog. She's always wanted a dog, and I've said to her that we can get one one day, but not until my cat passes away. My cat Sparky is 14 years old, is blind in one eye, and hates dogs. I love this cat. He's my baby, as I would love any animal that my partner and I get together. But is it unreasonable to ask that he lives out his twilight years in peace, eating his favorite foods, curling up by the fire, hogging the bed and watching tennis without getting a new puppy in the mix? My girlfriend says that I'm being unreasonable, that my cat and the new dog will be great friends, but I know Sparky, and he's always either been anxious or aggressive towards dogs. My friends and family say that if I love my girlfriend, I should let her get the dog. I do love her, and I'm not against her getting a dog, I'm just asking her to wait a little bit until my cat passes away. So am I the asshole? I think you guys have been together long enough to know this cat and know each other, and to me this seems like a reasonable request. I can see why she wants the dog so much, and absolutely, the dog is going to happen. Just let the cat live out its last years first. I do wonder how long the cat has left. 14 is pretty old, but it's not uncommon that cats live longer than that, like quite a bit longer. Uh, she's probably taking that into consideration as well. I'd be careful if I was OP here and the girlfriend's like, hey, hey, before we move to this country house, let's just move next to a, a main road for a few months and just see how, how we get along there, see if we like the change of scenery, with the intention of um, the cat not being able to see the cars on the main road. And, you know, life happens sometimes. That's what happened to my second cat. That was kind of sad. Anyway, don't let that happen, OP. That, that, that's probably a bad idea. I'm gonna go not the asshole for this one. I support you standing up for this cat. Now in the comments, Yachty Wannabe says, Not the asshole. Let old man Grumps live out his days dog free. And OP replies, Old man Grumps, that suits my cat to a T. Be advised, based on other posts of similar issues, she might force it by just randomly getting a dog to prove things will be fine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't forget this subreddit is full of the outliers of human behavior. Most people aren't enough of an asshole to do that. It's only a very small possibility. Yeah, but since it's an outlier already, my advice stands. It would be nice if it never happened, but being warned there's a chance means no follow-up post of being blindsided later with a puppy. Not the asshole, and I don't think the question is even whether the cat deserves to override any new dog's desires, and he does. Precious old grumpy cats. I have one too. The critical matter is that you were clear from the get-go that any future dogs in the relationship would have to be after old grump man passes. If girlfriend didn't like this setup, she was free to remove herself from the situation. Agreeing and moving in together only to get pissy later is 110% asshole behavior. And not the asshole. Basic rule of pets. Everyone who lives in the house gets veto power on any new pet being added to the house. In this case, you get veto power, and you can argue that your cat gets veto power as well. I think that you're fine to stick to your guns here. I think your girlfriend is being very lightly the asshole for pushing this issue. She's fine to want the dog, but not to keep pushing this if you've clearly explained your reasoning. And now on to the update. So I thought that I would give you all an update on the pet situation. After another argument with my girlfriend about the dog situation, we asked a friend of ours if we could look after her dog, a very placid, sleepy, and uninterested bulldog, for a few days while she was at work, so she could see for herself how Sparky would react. And let me say, my girlfriend now understands why I wanted to wait until Sparky had died before getting a dog. Within the six hours that we had the dog, Sparky had tried to bite him on the leg. I pulled him away before he could even make contact with him, and I hauled Sparky's ass upstairs, away from the dog after that moment. While upstairs, Sparky did nothing but yowl at us and revenge piss on the bed, before hiding on top of the wardrobe. While all of this was happening, my friend's dog just lay there on the floor of the lounge doing absolutely nothing. 
Upon seeing what Sparky was willing to do to a dog that wouldn't even hurt a fly, my girlfriend has now agreed that if she wants a dog, then it has to be an outdoor dog, which she doesn't want. Or to wait until the awful day that Sparky is no longer with us. Grumpus is very happy with that plan. Grumpus, Sparky, is now going to spend his golden years lying in front of the fire, watching tennis and Blue Planet on TV, eating lots of treats, and sitting on the landing windowsill where he loves to watch the whole world go by, while casually growling at any dog he sees walks past the house. And he's very happy with this plan. I promise my friend's dog was not hurt. I don't even think that he realized that my cat was planning on attacking him. And Sparky is as happy as a lamb again. No more revenge pissing. Now in the comments, Dog is my God says, I think this was a good way to handle it. No dogs were harmed and Sparky will be happy. Girlfriend now understands why Sparky can't be around dogs. Actually amazed at how well this solved the problem. Temp dog sitting never would have occurred to me. Also, it's amazing how good that dog was. If it was my dog, she would bark back and whine and probably howl out of anger, annoyance and fear. I don't think the girlfriend would understand Sparky as much because if it was a good dog, Sparky would be a good cat. Having such a good boy really showed Sparky don't give a far. Agreed. Also, my puppy dog liked cats originally and is a good old pup. But then it met grandma and grandpa's grumpy cat, and now she's been fearful of cats for the last five years. So OP, the lesson isn't just that the dog might get hurt and your cat would be unhappy, it's also the lasting effect on any new dog. A trial run was a genius idea. I've desperately wanted a dog for years, and while my girl can share a home with a dog, I see no reason to disrupt her life when she's only got a few years left. My want for a dog doesn't overrule her need for a calm, quiet home. Besides, the longer I wait for a dog, the more research I can do. And our next post is by user Queen Fairy, titled, Would I be the asshole for not telling my mum that my stepmom is adopting me? So I, 24 female, do not have a good relationship with my bio mum. Our relationship is tolerable due to her living a couple states away and us really only talking once or twice a month. I have a very good relationship with my dad and we are extremely close as a result. My dad will be officially marrying my stepmom before this year ends, but she's been in my life since I was 13 or 14. She's always been like a mother to me, even when she and my dad weren't together anymore. They were broken up for a few years and got back together almost three years ago, and I view her as my mum, her daughters as my sisters, etc. I want to honour her as my mum, and she's more than happy to adopt me, so we'll be moving forward with the process soon. I don't plan to tell my bio mum beforehand, because I kinda don't want to have to deal with it. I would, however, make the announcement via social media once everything is official, and my bio mum would be finding out that way. Where I live, the bio parents don't have anything to do with the process once it's an adult adoption. So would I be the asshole if I say nothing to my bio mum beforehand, and just let her find out about my adoption via social media? I guess that really depends on your mum and your relationship to your mum. You know, there's going to be several camps of people with different relationships to their own mothers, and the camp I'm in, I have a decent relationship with mine. So from my perspective, if I were to have a stepmother, that then I would just spring an adoption on online, I feel like that'd be a bit of a dick move it, without telling my biological mother at all. I feel like a lot of people would question it. I'd probably have quite a few family members upset at me for not telling her just because that doesn't seem like something you would do. So while morally, I'm not sure if you'd be an asshole for doing so, I think it's just questionable. And I don't think there's any reason in a lot of circumstances just not to give a heads up to your bio mom. But on the flip side, I understand you don't want to have to deal with that. I'm very much non-confrontational myself, and I can see myself doing something like this, unfortunately. So in considering that flip side and everything I've said previously, I'm going to say not the asshole. I don't think it's particularly egregious or, like, spiteful. It's just weird to me. Now in the comments, Mud and Whiskey says, Not trying to be rude. I'm actually confused. But what in the actual F is an adult adoption? 
And OP replies, It's essentially the same as adopting a minor. I would be legally considered my stepmom's daughter for all intents and purposes, inheritance, medical, etc. The only big difference is that where I live, my stepmom can adopt me without my bio mom's knowledge or consent as long as I consent to being adopted. But you lose all that with your bio mom. If she passed, she does not have to mention in her will. And OP replies, Honestly, my stepmom is way more successful and financially set than my mom has ever been. Though I'm not super concerned about a possible inheritance, and I will have some access to her military and professional benefits. Plus, in the worst case that something happened to me and my significant other, I want to ensure that our son would go to my dad and stepmom rather than my bio mom. Psychotic Anubis says, Not the asshole. You have no obligation to your bio mom for anything especially for you being adopted as you're already an adult and can make your own choices on this matter. Elegant Rectum says, No assholes here, but I think you should probably tell her personally before you announce it on social media. I mean, you say you don't have a good relationship with her, but you still talk to her monthly, which means that she has some role in your life. You want no contact with her. I assume you care about her to some extent as a human being, if not as a mother. So I think it would be better if she doesn't find out online. And OP replies, I'll take this into consideration. We've had periods of no contact before, which I've always been okay with. But she always ends up wanting to contact again, which I don't mind as long as it's not detrimental to me. I care about her like I would an associate, I guess. My stepmom is the one I consider to be my mom, my son's grandmother, etc. Now back to the post. Edit. Thank you all for your comments and judgments. I read and took into consideration each and every one of them. While the general consensus seems to be that I wouldn't be in the wrong to not say anything, I've decided to give my bio mom a heads up prior to posting the news on social media. I'm going to wait till everything is official to tell her and will post an update at that time. And for our first update, so we finally started moving forward with the adoption process. We filed the petition for an adult adoption and paid the filing fee. I got my consent letter notarized today. There's just a few more papers to do later. SM and Dad are super happy and excited about it, especially since they're going to be officially married in a few months. My dad had a stroke due to that which shall not be named, so the wedding got pushed back. The average turnaround to be completely finalized is supposed to be 60 to 90 days, I'm hoping that's still the case despite the current circumstances of the world. I still haven't said anything to my bio mom yet, and I'm waiting till everything is official. It's not much of an update, but it's something for everyone that cared enough to comment last time. And now on to the update. So, the adoption hearing was this past Thursday. It was meant to be last month, but got pushed back due to the freak snowstorm we had. It was online through Zoom, and it only took 10 to 15 minutes speaking to the judge and getting the papers signed. After that was done, I called my bio mom, and I spoke with her about our relationship, before finally telling her about the adoption. I told her that my decision wasn't meant to be malicious or hurt her in any way, that it was something that would make me happy, and that it didn't mean that we couldn't still have a relationship. She took the news pretty well, and said that she'd always love me and be my mom regardless of what a piece of paper says. The call ended on a good note, and I'm hopeful that things will stay that way. My parents and I, along with my significant other and son, then had a yummy celebratory breakfast and an overall great day. We didn't post about the adoption on social media until a few hours after my bio mom and I had our conversation, but we did get an outpouring of love from friends and family once we shared the news. I know I originally anticipated this update being filled with lots of drama, but I'm happy to have been wrong it seems. Edit to add, since some users thought this should be included, before telling her about the adoption, I did discuss with her my hesitation at letting her have a relationship with my son during our conversation regarding our relationship. I did also make it clear that if my rules and boundaries regarding me and my child weren't followed, she wouldn't be in his life. And in the comments, Snail Varnish says, Congratulations. I've also looked into adult adoption, for different reasons however, but I totally get your reasons for going through with it. 
I decided not to do it as I don't want my bio dad taken off my birth certificate. He passed, but we were very close. But I may eventually hyphenate my name. I'm glad you were able to get official documentation of your relationship and that everything went okay with your bio mom in the end. Smiley face. A lot of folks don't understand adult adoption or even know it's an option. But having that relationship documented is just as valid as documenting a marriage. I hope everything continues to go well for you. And OP replies, Thank you so much, and I'm happy to hear things worked out for you in your own way. Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below. And make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages and thank you so much for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.